Hey, can you add? Hey guys, it is Mooney Bro bringing you a video again. I'm really excited to be uploading to this channel again. Uh, and again, I'm a content creator for this channel. You can definitely check out my YouTube if you like what you see. That's uh, youtube.com slash user slash MooneyBroYT. Or you can just look up MooneyBroYT on YouTube. You should be able to find it pretty easily. Uh, but yeah, that, that's who I am. Again, uh, this is the second time uploading to this channel, so I'm really excited. And uh, basically, Radiate asked me to make a video about UMG Nashville. Uh, and I was definitely going to do that already, uh, so, so definitely thinking on the same page there. Uh, and, but this video is going to be a little bit different uh, than some of the other videos I've already posted of UMG Nashville on my channel. If you want to look at just the placings of everyone and go into the more of the statistical side of UMG Nashville, uh, who placed one in group play... Uh, who came from the open bracket, who, you know, map count, and all that stuff. You can definitely go on my channel and check that out. Uh, it's titled something like UMG Nashville Final Placings. You should be able to find it pretty quickly. Uh, so I didn't want to just copy the content of that video into this one, uh, but there was something I really wanted to talk about, and I think you guys are going to find it interesting, especially if you're in the competitive uh, Call of Duty scene. And even if you're not, it's something that uh, is really important, I think, uh, in the Call of Duty competitive scene, in the esports scene, however you want to put it. Uh, but what we're actually going to be talking about is the bracket uh, and how the tournament worked. Uh, basically, the tournament bracket setup, pool play setup, whatever you want to call it, at UMG Nashville. Uh, now, if you don't know, basically how it worked is uh, there was an open bracket, and uh, they, they did the open bracket first, okay? And basically, four teams can make it from the open bracket into the pro bracket, which actually started off in pool play. So basically, there was a single elimination pool play, uh, sorry, excuse me, there was a single elimination open bracket where anyone could buy a team pass and come and show up and try to play. And then if you made it through, uh, then you got to go to the pro. And I believe the teams that made it through were, uh, let's see, Excellent, Stunner, and uh, a few others. I don't know. I, and like I said, if you want to go check out all the specific teams, you can go check out my video on that. Uh, so basically, once that happened, all there were four pools of four teams each. Uh, once those four teams from Open Bracket made it through, uh, and that obviously gives us a total of 16 teams. And how it worked was everyone played everyone once, so you could either finish 3-0, 2-1, 1-2, or 0-3. And based on that, you were put into the tournament. And the cool thing about this pool play setup, uh, instead of the ones where only the top one or two teams make it to the bracket uh, to compete for the money is that actually everyone made it through. Uh, but here's the catch. So basically, uh, like I said, every, all, each of the four pools had four teams in it. And the top team from each pool was placed into the championship or the winner side of that championship bracket. Okay. And the other three teams were placed in either losers round one, losers round two, or losers round three of the lower bracket basically and what that did was it forced some teams to face off right away uh, like NV and EG and play for top 16 very very early on in that bracket uh, now that was something that was pretty controversial because NV finished 1 and 2 and EG finished 2 and 1 and they had to play each other uh, where there was teams like Optic Nation who finished 0-3 in their pool play and didn't have to play for top 16 uh, and, and they ended up getting that, but basically it was a little bit unfair. But outside of that, it was a pretty fair tournament because you see teams like FaZe, who finished 3-0 in their pool play, end up winning the tournament. So it kind of shows that whoever can play consistently uh, can play is going to win the tournament. And that's what you really want to see in a tournament rather than a team having an off off day, uh, which FaZe kind of had that, that first... Uh, that first day at Nashville and, and still be able to bring it back and do place really well in the tournament. Uh, now, what was really exciting about this tournament for me is that you saw teams from the open bracket actually finish uh, top 12, and that, that's something you always want to see because previously they hadn't really allowed teams to go so far through the tournament. Basically, once you won the open bracket, you were done, even if you won. 
uh, and you had to stop. And I think that that's definitely something they could uh, keep doing, is letting teams from the open bracket play the pro teams, because that's the dream everyone wants. That's what you want to see in a young esports community. Uh, before there are established professional teams with professional contracts, you want to be able to let the underdogs take it to the to the pros. Uh, now, the only thing I would really tweak about this, and I want you guys to let me know what you guys think, but I think they should have put two teams in the winner's bracket and two teams in the loser's bracket from pool play. That's going to give uh, everyone a chance to, to really play uh, as fair as possible you don't see people playing for top 16 so that being said i hope you enjoyed this video but as always this has been your boy mooney bro thanks for watching and i'll river stream see ya and if you like what you see be sure to check out my youtube channel it's been a pleasure